Okay, I'm recording. Okay, so we're talking about your um, your editorial, but uh, as you guys both know, a lot has changed since then. So we had the uh, budget passed and uh, with no stimulus check, but the $1,000 dividend. Sean, I'll just start with you. What's your message right now to people regarding that issue? Well, listen, I think first off, we, we back up to the hardship that Alaskans face and the fight we face with COVID-19. And obviously this health fight is first. And uh, second, Alaskans um, are losing their jobs and losing their, their businesses. And so my message is, I think the same as Senator Baggage, and that is that uh, the Alaska legislature needs to put cash into Alaskans' pockets and into that of small businesses. And we need to do it now and across the next few months to stabilize and smooth out uh, this economic shock that our state is, is reeling from and that households are, are feeling hard. And so it, didn't, it obviously didn't happen. We get $1,000 in October. So what are you pressing for right now? What do you, what do you well, it's not, it's, the battle's not over. I mean, the, the legislature uh, recessed. They did not adjourn for the year. They set themselves up to, be, to come back um, in case they, they feel like circumstances have changed. I don't think, I think uh, the necessity remains. It re, it's compounding even as we speak. And I think they're going to have to come back for uh, this for this uh, um, this effort as well as for uh, several other items that that uh, they're going to learn about when they get back to their districts. And Mark, what's your take on that? I mean, let me back up too to the to the need. What's your thought about what we're seeing right now out there? Well, there's no question. I, the work that uh, Governor Parnell and I have been doing for the last ten days, two weeks. I've lost track of time. It all melds together. Uh, we've probably talked to well over 1,500 plus Alaskans through our video conferences and teleconferences on many different industries. And it's very clear to us, you got it. You, you need to get cash into hands of Alaskans immediately. Second, the business community also needs, especially the small and medium-sized businesses, they need to have a bridge in order to handle the business interruption of their income, but also to deal with uh, cash flow issues that they're they're challenged with, but you know the legislature. I agree 100% with Governor Purnell. And that is that the issue of them not they didn't adjourn, they recessed, which is important. Uh, they need to do something with a cash amount to residents, and our point is to do it over a period of time so you create kind of a smoothing effect because the federal money will come in real quick, and then that, that will be it. And what we need for our overall economy and the stability of our economy is to take an amount that they can smooth it out over a four to five, six month period. So our economy feels it not in one big you know, spike, but over a period and smooths it out. That's been our recommendation from day one uh, that the legislature and the governor do this. The governor proposed an idea. I know there's Democrats and Republicans in the legislature that were supportive of doing an emergency stimulus amount for Alaskans. They just couldn't get the majority to, to be there. But again, we would argue, and, and again, we're, we're working hand in hand on this issue on economic stability for the state, but some sort of smoothing. But we recognize that the most important thing now is this life safety issues and then rebuilding this economy and smoothing out the, the income impacts. But as you know, the cash just didn't happen right now, and, and I don't know how much discussion is going on in Juneau. I mean, how do you make your pitch to lawmakers uh, to, to get what you want, and that's cash, more cash right now? Well, I, I, I think Alaskans I think, <laughs> I think, I think Alaskans are going to tell them loud and clear right. when they get home. Um, I heard it when I, I had to go to the store uh, two days ago, and I just heard people around me talking about what they did with adjourning with a you know, a thousand dollar PFD in October. And they basically the comments in the store were, how is that going to help us now? And I think when they get back to their hometowns, I think they're going to hear it loud and clear. I totally agree. I was at a, a restaurant last night picking up dinner and the first words out of the uh, owner's mouth was, so it looks like we're not going to get the help from the state in regards to an emergency payment. I said, well, today, and she said, I'm just, and she was really upset. She's a, she's working a lot of hours at her restaurant, trying to hold it together. And that would have helped her in many ways. And so, um, yeah, I think Governor Burnell's right. They're going to hear when they get back home, if they're not hearing about it now, I'd be surprised. Let, let me, let me uh, and just bear with me, if you will, on this. 
say I'm a lawmaker and I'm and you're in the room with me, both of you, and I say, you know what, guys, we can't afford it. First of all, oil is getting killed right now. Um, some people think it could go to ten dollars a barrel or less, um, and we just can't afford it. We'll overdraw uh, earnings reserve. That'll put uh, jeopardy uh, on next year's dividend. And it's just, it just, where do we get the money? This can't happen. We can't do it. Yeah. Here's how I described it yesterday to someone. And, um, you know, we're all in this boat together. You know, this is not a Democrat Republican issue. It's not about, you know, I believe this or that it's, we're all in this boat together and leaks are starting to occur and you have a choice. You can start fixing those leaks right now or, the way I perceive the legislature, they sat back and are waiting to see how many leaks they get. Well, by the time you see all the leaks, you might be at the bottom of the ocean. And we cannot afford not to do something now in order to deal with this over the long term. Waiting and hoping and you know, thinking that, well, we may not have the dollars necessary in the future, but we may not have an economy in the future if we're not careful. So you, they have to do something and not doing anything is not acceptable from what we, and we hear it every call we make, every video conference we're on with hundreds of Alaskans, it is very clear and, and consistent that they have to do something recognizing that it will be still rough in the future because you're right, today oil prices are down, tomorrow we don't know what they're gonna be, but we do know one thing, the economy is already crashing. Sean, if you were today, what would you do in Juno to make uh, multiple payments happen? Say that, that again. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. If you were governor right now, what would you do right now in Juno to make multiple stimulus payments happen? Well, I, I think that's I think that's the um, mistaken impression is that the governor actually can do that. It's the legislature that has the power of appropriation. It's the legislature that writes the checks and. Uh, the governor did what he could. He he asked and he fought for uh, a payment of thirteen hundred, I believe. Um, the Senate at one point had a thousand dollar, you know, right. emergency payment in that got stripped out in the final analysis. Um, I agree with Senator Begich. The legislature, uh, Alaska, cannot afford for the legislature to stand by and do nothing in this regard. Well, let me change my question. What do you think the governor and the legislature can do to come together? Because that just doesn't seem to happen. How do they come together and make something happen? Well, I'll answer real ahead. quick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're looking at two people right here that are on different ends of the spectrum politically and at times have disagreed on issues, but we have decided for the betterment of the state, it is important that we work together, find where the common ground is, and bring ideas and efforts to the administration and policymakers on economic recovery. If people just kind of put aside that and focus on what is going to make a difference for our state and our economy, I think they can get there. I do believe that, you know, being down in Juneau is one thing. Now they're back home. And I want to emphasize the point that Governor Parnell made, and that is they're going to hear from people. People people are nervous. And, and again, keep in mind, this is a temporary issue, but temporary issues could have long lasting impact if we do not deal with them. And it is better to deal with this crisis now. And I think legislators will start to see that as they continue to talk with uh, and hear from their constituency. But, you know, I, I think part of what we're trying to do as we meet with folks is to just by our actions are saying, look, Put aside all that difference and focus on what's right for Alaska right now. It may not be perfect. It may not be the, the answer that solves all the problems. But if you don't do something, I guarantee you the, the impacts will be even more dramatic down the road. Let me ask you, what, what about paying for it? How do, you, how do you pay for this? How do you pay for you know, multiple stimulus payments? Listen, the, the, the Senate had already figured out how to pay for a thousand dollar payment. They could split that into two and they've got two months of payments. There are multiple ways that legislators and the governor can agree to come together on this. There are multiple sources of funds. We have the money right now. What they're worried about is not having the money in three years. But as Senator Begich and I uh, made the point,